welcome. We are going to get started here so you guys can get this learned and such. But welcome. This is our workshop. We're going to be talking about riding fears. Yeah, so my name is Stephanie Pointer. I'm Jack Bylin. I'm Tyler Monson. I'm Haley Hibbard. And we're all tutors at the Writing Center, so we're really excited to be here and present with you guys today. Um, not because we're necessarily excellent at writing, but because we sure have been doing it for a while, at the very least. And so we're kind of talking with you today about things we've seen in our sessions and how like, writing can be a less painful thing in your life. So before we dive into that, I do want to ask you guys, because this is at least partially a social experience as well, it's not just us lecturing you, it's delightful as I'm sure you would find that. But I will ask, um, what is your worst writing experience in high school or in college? Sean, you have opinions, what was your worst writing experience? Um, I wrote a novel my freshman year of college, which was a disaster. It was just a hot mess the whole way through. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I know for me in high school, I had to write a fantasy newspaper for an English class for Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series. Um, it was long, it took me hours, because I definitely waited until the night before it was due. So I worked on it until about three o'clock in the morning. I had to write the obituary for the author because he died before the last book came out, because that's how fantasy authors do it. George R. R. Martin. Um, <laughs> and one day Brandon. Never died. But it sucked. And that was my experience. Anyone else? Any worst writing experiences? Just most of them. High school. <laughs> 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 just high school. That was just my worst experience for everything. That's fair. What about you? Yeah, I was going to say I had a high school teacher that uh, you would come in after school to make sure that it was, everything was up to his standards and you'd still only get a 60%. So, bless him. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not fair. Um, one time I wrote a paper that I thought was like the best paper of my life, and I got it back and I got a 55 on it. And then it was like a mastery thing, so you could redo it until you got the grade you wanted. So I spent like two hours fixing things, and she gave me five points back. Just oh, fine. Oh, oh. <laughs> it was fine. Oh, so you put your heart and soul into it, and she's just like, no. And she's like, your soul's not enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Do you want to share your worst writing experience? That sounded personal. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, dead week last winter. Um, it was a dark, snowy night. And my professor had not followed dead week rules and had put the assignment during dead week. Um, but I was so busy with literally everything else in my life, I didn't have any more time than 24 hours before it was due. And so I stayed awake for an entire 48 hours um, to try and get it done. And like my paper did okay, but what the real sad story in this is around 4 a.m. I had a friend text me saying like, I am desperate, please look at my paper. Um, she was in the same class. I looked at it and I think it was a paper for a different class because absolutely nothing to that paper made sense. And it was due in two hours and I cried for her. I was in my bed like crying. I'm like this isn't even my paper, but like, ouch. My paper also deserved a few tears though. It was <laughs> that was a roller coaster. That's just my life. So the point there being, I guess in short, is that writing can sure suck. I mean, I think we've all had, quite frankly, a, to put it bluntly, sucky writing experience in our lives. But what we're here to talk to you guys about is how to make writing suck at least a little bit less, and how to make it just a little bit less scary. And instead of being spooky, it can be Bob Ross, happy little papers, happy little writing assignments. And these are our main points that we'll be discussing on how to make writing that much less scary and suck less. You might even like writing a little bit, maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully. So one of my biggest fears, I'm a, I'm a big perfectionist, and I will work for hours and hours and hours trying to get the perfect product. And I'm terrified of finishing my amazing paper and looking at the rubric and being like, crap. I did not hit the requirements. And that happens a lot. In the writing center, I've helped a lot of students, and I read the, over the rubric, and I'm like, you, you, it's an amazing paper, but you're not going to get the credit that you need unless you follow the teacher's instructions. And so I know it's a pretty simple question with a simple answer, but why do professors give us rubrics? What is the point? Yeah. I think it's as much to help them as it is to us to give a clear understanding of what they want, because you know, even 
professor can ask you to write a persuasive research paper and give you a breakdown of stuff, but it's still to two different people or two different areas of the United States, that can be very different things. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to add to that amazing definition? You guys all good? Good job. A plus. Okay. So, like you said, it's really a guideline so that we will not fail. They're telling us, I want you to do this because I want you to succeed. Professors don't want to fail you, but they want you to learn and they want you to grow. And so the biggest thing for me that helps me to make sure that my paper is in line with the rubric is to have one next to me when I'm writing. Also, before you write the paper, before you even start brainstorming, look at the rubric right away and start saying, what do I need in order to have an A? If you're putting in A effort, you want to be doing it in the A kind of way. And so here, for example, is an example of a rubric. And just um, the focus part for master goals is what the professor most likely wants. An engaging and full development of a clear thesis as appropriate to assignment, to assignment purpose. So they want it to be an engaging thesis. They want it to be carried throughout the paper. Also for structure organization, Organization is sequential and important and appropriate to assignment. Paragraphs are well developed and appropriately divided. Ideas linked to smooth and smooth and effective transitions. It's laid out so perfectly, hey, I want this, this, and this. And if you're having a hard time with that, come in with the writing um, the writing center tutors. We want to help you in order to have this amazing paper. And then there's the prompt. So the prompt is what the professor gives you. Um, like a guideline for what he wants you to do. Have you guys ever had a prompt that you're just like, what the heck is this talking about? Have you guys ever been kind of confused by a prompt? Yeah? No shame, guys. If your hands are not up, I don't believe you. Um, <laughs> sometimes they're really confusing because they, and we really need to understand them because they're so important. Because the prompt tells us the purpose. Are you trying to persuade your audience? Are you trying to inform them? Are you trying to narrate a story? You need to understand it so you know who you're talking to and what your purpose is, and also who you're talking to. Are you writing to your professor, to your peers, to an academic audience? You need to understand it so you can succeed. And so, when your prompt isn't very clear, here are some things that you can do to understand it better. Um, Stephanie gave me this great idea that I'm gonna start using in my own writing, is when you're looking at a really unclear prompt, take bullet points of what you do understand the things that you've seen that they're asking you to do. Come to the writing center. We'd love to help you to decipher what that prompt is saying. Also, meet with your professor. I know they can seem pretty intimidating, but they want to help you. You can email them. There are office hours. And come on, you're in college. Be brave and set an appointment. It's not that scary. Sometimes they might seem a little bit like this. <laughs> Super intimidating and really creepy. But they're mostly like this. Yeah. <laughs> they really want to help you. Their whole like career is for you. They want to help you succeed. So if you have any prompt or rubric issues, talk to them. And you'll be able to have a great start for your paper. OK, awesome. Thank you, Haley. Um, I'm curious, though, like, who would rather take an exam than write a paper? Yeah, I need to feel Okay, yeah, no, I'm an English major and there are many days in the week that I'm like, I will take that exam, just don't make me write that paper. Um, so, especially when we have boring prompts, let's like do this totally insane scenario that you're in a gen ed class that you don't care about and you have to write a paper. Um, probably will never happen to you because it never happened to me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, chances are that paper is going to be a prompt that is really boring and you're just like, can't even force yourself to read the whole thing because you're like, that prompt is awful. So, um, I'm going to make the assumption that you guys have been in that situation at the very least in high school. We're going to take this there. Um, and I want to know, what have you done in situations where you're like, this prompt is literally the devil. It is the ugliest, most boring thing I could have ever done with my life. What do you guys do to like overcome the prompt? Well, I'm not sure if it's overcome. You just asked what I, what I did. So, I mean, okay. I'd run away from it. I'd just like, try to avoid it and be like, no, I don't want to do that. I'll do something else that seems productive, like even do other homework yeah. that's less important, mm -hmm. but that makes me feel kind of good, like, oh, I'm doing something. And then I get close to the deadline, and then it, it's all freaking. 
I want to scream like that. Yes. Yeah. No. So productive procrastination until like the inevitable strikes. Yeah. Apparently awesome. productive procrastination. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Anything else? Well, actually, uh, oh, Weston. Weston. Um, I try to make it something that I'll actually be interested in. So if okay. I can't make the topic, twist it in a way to make it so it's something that I can write about in a way okay. that interests me. I try to make my writing interesting in a way that it's like, oh, I'm going to try to use more semicolons in this paper just as practice, just to make it Ooh, something different. Get from spicy no there with your punctuation. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do anything. No conjunctions or something like that, to make it different. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Ooh. Anything else that you guys have had to like use as a tool to get you through a boring prompt? Actually, you first. I BS the whole thing. BS the whole thing. <laughs> there is a reason why there's a Bachelor of Science, because we earn those BS degrees, people. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. But Jack, you said you have one. I have a bad example, which is actually kind of related to that. For a class, a science class when I was a senior in high school, we had to connect our future major with space exploration, actually. And so what I did was I lied, because I, I did not know how to connect English to space travel, which I think is pretty fair. So I switched, I, I lied and I said journalism and talked about coverage of the moon landing. And that didn't work. Uh, I wrote a good paper, but my teacher said, that's not what you put down that you were going to study, Jack. So I got a bad grade, uh, even though it was a good paper, because I lied. Here's to the BS degree. Um, okay, well, thanks for sharing that, Jack. Okay, if you go to the next slide. So there's a few things we can do. Um, the first bullet point is my favorite. I want you to know that I was talking to some grad students, and this came from a grad student. Cry and then do it anyway. Um, I have shed too many tears over papers, and I'm not ashamed. There is a box of tissues next to my computer for a reason. Um, the other thing you can do is you can talk with a professor or with a writing tutor. Um, honestly, you could talk to anyone. I'm saying professor or writing tutor because chances are they're going to keep you based in reality. Um, but the reason why I'm saying this is there's something magical when you start talking with people. Um, ideas start to flow, and suddenly, like, you get connections, and it becomes magic. That's why, as a tutor, my favorite sessions are brainstorming sessions, because they're the most magical things that I can do with a student. But we're going to go back to Weston's point, because he totally, like, read my mind. One of the great things you can do when you have a really boring point is to take inspiration from your own life. So we're going to do a prompt. There are pens here. Does everyone have a pen? Does everyone have a paper? I have extra. OK. Thank you, Melanie. While Melanie's passing out pens and paper, for those who need it, we're going to, I mean, this prompt is a far cry from as bad as it could be. But the prompt is going to be to pick a film and then give us some reason why, a couple of reasons why it's a good movie. So. Because I want to take you first through the brainstorming session, what I want you to do first on your paper is to list three movies that you like. I'm not asking for love, I'm not asking for favorite, I'm not even asking for your mom's favorite. Just three movies that you've seen recently that you're like, yeah, that was enjoyable. So we're gonna list those three, and then I want you to hone in on one, and just kind of discuss very re various reasons about why you liked it. So I'll give you five minutes, and then we'll come together and have a little talk. Okay, awesome. So, I, as you guys finish your sentences, I'm gonna talk for a second. I obviously wasn't writing, but because I did this presentation, I do have three movies in mind. So the three movies I picked because it's Halloween is A Quiet Place. Have you guys seen that? That's so, so good. good. So good. It's, it's so spooky. Fun. A Quiet Place. <laughs> oh yeah. And we want. Mm -hmm. um, and then Wait Until Dark. That has Audrey Hepburn. If you're looking for a classy scare. <laughs> And then for my third one, we're going to go with Hunt for the Wilder People because like New Zealand is my place. Um, so if I'm going to use A Quiet Place, one reason why I really liked it is because it was an effective use of silence throughout the entire film. Um, so that's just me, but do any of you guys want to share what film you chose and why? I'll share mine. Okay, thanks. Man. I'm a child of the 80s. So, Never Ending Story is one of my all-time favorites. Nice. I have um, the struggle is relatable, like he feels isolated and bullied and um, needs a way to escape. 
Um, I love the imagination, like they have new characters that you've never seen. My all-time favorite is the left dragon, because it looks like a cocker spaniel, but it's got scales. <laughs> You're not wrong, it does look like a cocker spaniel. <laughs> and then, um, I really like the unexpected ending, that, you know, you get to start over. Perfect. Perfect. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Melanie. Okay, who else? What was there going to be? Um, one of my movies was uh, Walter Mitty. Really I love that one. Yeah. So okay, why do you love it? Um, I really love the cinematography. It's just really beautifully done. Solid. Um, I also like the scenes where he's dream, like daydreaming, and mm -hmm. some crazy stuff happens. <laughs> Um, it's just, I always just I thoroughly enjoy that movie every time. It's just beautiful to look at and really entertaining and kind of it's inspiring as well. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you. Okay, with your free rights in mind, I'm going to hand you off to Jack. Yeah. No, to Tyler. Tyler. to me. <laughs> to Tyler. Yeah. Um, so, with that in mind, we're going to take that and we're going to put it away for just a couple minutes and talk a little bit about thesis statements before we move on. Who can tell me what a thesis statement is? The main idea, yeah, exactly. It's a statement that you put at the end of your first paragraph of your essay that encompasses what the main idea of your essay is going to be. So what do you guys feel like contributes to a good thesis statement? What should it include? It should be concise. Yeah, exactly. It should be concise. Your thesis statement is your main argument for the rest of the essay, so that's kind of like the, the big takeaway. A lot of times we like to look at the thesis statement and have it be kind of a laundry list of things that are going to be happening throughout the essay. And that doesn't necessarily have to be true. You can include all of your main points, but you can also just include your main argument for your essay as well. Um, let's see. Like I said, it should be like kind of the main, um, I said the main argument. It should be towards the end of the first paragraph of your essay so the reader can find it easily and then have a kind of like a roadmap for what's going to happen for the rest of the essay, right? Um, so I have a thesis statement from pop culture up here right here, um, because it is Halloween. It says, there are three things I've learned never to discuss with people, religion, politics, and the great pumpkin. <laughs> if I was writing an essay with that thesis statement, what would my main points be for the essay? Or I keep make my body paragraphs out of religion, politics, and yeah. Exactly, yeah. Bad discussion topics. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a practice um, looking at the thesis statement in right here. So who's been to Disneyland before? It's great. Um, you guys are cool. Am I the only one that hasn't been? I haven't. OK, cool. <laughs> you two should go. Yeah, I never should go. Cool. Yeah, we should. <laughs> <laughs> Girls. It's not good. So, I have right up here an ineffective thesis statement. It says, the Haunted Mansion is a good ride. Why is this thesis statement not very strong? It's kind of big. It's kind of big, yeah. Define good. Absolutely. It's big. So, I have a separate one right here. The next one says, uh, the Haunted Mansion is a good ride because it provides an immersive experience for its guests through its theming, atmosphere, and special effects. Um, this makes it better because it is, it's specific, right? It, it has an actual argument that it's making a point of. Um, it's less vague, it's more decisive, and it can actually give us an idea of where this paper is going to go if we were to write it. Um, so, I'm going to take just two minutes. We're going to like, really quick break out. I want you guys to write a thesis statement just based on, I mean, if you haven't been to Disneyland, it's okay, but like, still work on your favorite movie or something like that, we're going to look at that later, but pick a ride or something at Disneyland and write why you feel like it's good or bad or what you would do with that. Or like, if you haven't been to Disneyland, because that exists, you can also use your free write and make yes. a thesis statement based off of the movie that you chose. Yes, and you can use that for later. So. Yeah, just take one minute and just do that really quick.
ahead and start wrapping it up. Give you 10 more seconds. And that's about it. Who has one that they wrote that they would like to share? It's okay if you don't want to go. <laughs> no pressure. Cool. Well, I hope. Um... <laughs> Let me share yours first. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, me? That's right. Yeah, well. That was mine up there. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> but Sean just happened. Hey, I did the Dr. Graham thesis where it's like, although popular, state. anyway. So, although many people dislike The Last Jedi, it is nearly a perfect movie because the character development and story arc make Episode 8 the most literary Star Wars movie ever made. That's Huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> Disappoint? Dis <laughs> Disneyland disappoints many people because it is often overhyped, overpriced, and way too crowded. Those are really Those are very fair. <laughs> Those are fair. I believe you. Go find out. <laughs> go in January. That's fine. That is the time to go. Or October. October is wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Okay, so once you have all of those things together, making an outline should be pretty easy. And if you don't have a thesis statement yet, you might have to do some research and your points might come before that. But most of the time, you'll probably know what you're talking about by the time you come to writing the paper. So once you have a thesis statement, a topic you care about, and you know what's expected of you, you can make an outline. So I worked in the Writing Fellows program this past semester and I met with a student and towards the end of our session, this is a program where I meet with students and edit their papers um, um, for like a class, specifically this was an art history class. Uh, but she asked me um, how we should know what to write next and told me about how she would sit in front of her laptop for 40 minutes or an hour just unsure where to take this sentence next or this paragraph next. And I wasn't even super sure if I was answering her question the way that she wanted exactly, but I told her a little bit about outlining, and it royally blew her mind. She had never heard anything, so I'm not gonna say interesting, because not everyone loves writing, and she didn't, but so effective about writing. Um, outlining, once you have all of these things down, outlining is the keystone of making your paper work. So when you outline, the short of it is you'll have your thesis statement, and then you'll have a few points that back up that thesis statement, that back up your argument. Why is the Haunted Mansion a good ride? Because it has an immersive experience with atmosphere, special effects, and whatever that third point was. It's theming. And theming. <laughs> and it's spooky. It is. It's way cool. That it is. <laughs> and the thing is, once you have this outline set, writing the rest of your paper is going to seem a lot easier and will be a lot easier. I'm not going to say it's always going to be easy because paper is going to paper sometimes, but it will make the process so much less difficult, less scary, and I don't like this word, but less sucky than normal. Outlining is super worth it. It will give your essay structure rather than if you just wrote it free and went for it, and you will probably get a better grade, and quite frankly, isn't that what we're here for in some ways? Um, you want to that, please? So I prepared, I'm so sorry, man. I prepared a sample outline, um, and I decided to go controversial in the hopes that it would be at least memorable whether you agreed or disagreed, and because this is what I think anyway, and that's what I think. But so as you can see, I need a picture because I need a picture. <laughs> so we have our thesis statement. Star Wars Last Jedi, despite divided opinions, is clearly a good movie that will stand the test of time. You'll notice I don't have a laundry list exactly of points in my thesis statement, and that's okay. I could also have said something like, Star Wars Last Jedi is a good movie because of its interesting and diverse character, strong messages, and subversive storytelling. But this thesis statement works because we have the it's a good movie, and also a why or a so what. And that's why it's not quite, you know, Tyler's bad example of the Haunted Mansion is a good ride. But so what we've got here is important. I'm gonna talk about this for just a sec. Notice that there's four points. I feel like in high school we're a little bit conditioned to the five paragraph essay where we have an introduction, three paragraphs with three points, and a conclusion. 
and that is not the case anymore. I had a literature professor, Dr. Grant, he's a hero, sit me down and say, Jack, you do know you don't have to do that anymore, and I was quite stunned. It was really nice. Um, but so I have four points, and you know what, if you only have two points, that's grand too. We're in college and we're adults, and that's okay. But you'll see here that we have points, and then we have essentially points about the points. And they all are going back towards that thesis of The Last Jedi is a good movie. Here it is, Last Jedi is a good movie. Why? Because it has strong messages. What are these strong messages? Well, one of them is that failure teaches us how to be better. Yoda himself says that to Luke Skywalker in the movie. He says, failure is the greatest teacher. And we get that thesis to right there in the movie. But we also see it played out in Poe Dameron's story arc. In the opening of the movie, Poe Dameron leads his X-Wing fighters against a First Order Dreadnought. And even though he wins the battle, he loses more than half of his soldiers and is demoted by General Leia for that failure. He doesn't value lives and wants to seem like a hero. And he has not learned. But by the time we come to the end of the movie, when he's once more, just like in the poster down here, and it was so awesome, guys. You know, when he's leading the Skeeters on crate against the First Order once more, once they begin to lose guys and he realizes that the mission is futile, rather than pushing forward and making those unnecessary sacrifices, he calls off the attack. And he, he's learned, and he's learned, and failure is the greatest teacher. The thing is he learned that he should try to be a hero. And see what I did there is I transitioned into the next point. So when you outline, that's really easy to do. And from there, we go to another paragraph of other things. Outlining makes it super easy. So with that being said, I'm going to leave this sample outline up here, and we're going to have you guys take your movie or your Disneyland ride and make yourself a sample outline just like this one with two points or four points or however many points you think your movie deserves. I think last year I deserves like 18,000 points, but that's just me. Um, give us a thesis statement. Give us two to four points about why your movie is a good movie, and we'll go from there. Okay, if you're not quite finished writing, feel free to finish up. Um, but I'm actually going to ask you guys first. So, Steph, what was your movie and your thesis statement of points? Okay, so I'm going to keep with The Quiet Place. And so my thesis statement is, um, The Quiet Place is an effective thriller because of its use of filming techniques. Um, so my first point is the way it focuses on minute details. Um, have you all seen it? Okay, I'm not going to spoil this, but we're just going to go general. Any thriller, any good thriller, will focus on a really small detail that seems kind of strange, but will later come back to haunt you in your nightmares for the next decade. So, and The Quiet Place does a great job of that. Point two, I actually didn't make it to point two because I was so busy thinking of my thesis statement. Um, point two, I could make the claim that it is effective because of the way that the camera pans through large scenes, um, especially the action scenes. Um, they don't focus too much on the gore, um, which for me is extra effective because I'm not about that blood. Um, so that's how my outline went. Yeah? Yeah, I remember my mom had talked about it. She said she was grateful it wasn't like visually scary, but for her psychologically it really was. It's a psychological and After trip. she found yeah. she was very <laughs> jumpy, she had a hard time going to sleep. Like, she wished she would have watched it like at 2 yeah. like, p.m. instead of like staying up until, she didn't stay up until 2 a.m. to watch the movie, but she stayed up till then because like she couldn't go to sleep. So that could be another one of my points. Like the plot was so well developed, they didn't need the use of gore in order to create an effective scare. So thank you, perfect. So what about you, Tyler? What's your movie? My favorite movie is The Greatest Showing. Okay, I agree to disagree. Um, what was your favorite movie? Have you guys ever seen Remember the Titans? Uh, yeah. Yes. Have you guys seen it? Yes. Yeah? Okay, I'm not a football person, but I love that movie for so many reasons. So um, my thesis is Remember the Titans is an inspirational, is an exceptional film that will continue to inspire generations of Americans to come. Um, and my, my points are, is one, that it promotes a message of racial equality that people from different um, races can come together, become friends, and overcome stereotypes. Um, my second point is that it's applicable to our lives because in a way we're all a little prejudiced against different kinds of people. It helps you stop and think and say, hey, how am I like these characters and how can I change myself? Um, three, amazing acting and Denzel Washington is a babe. Denzel. Man. Denzel. Man. <laughs> Woo! He's great. And then the fourth one, it's actually a true story and it's really applicable to us and it really inspires you to know that you can make a difference. One small community can make a difference in the world. So that's why I love it. Wonderful. 
What what exam what did you guys come up with? What did you guys write down for your movie, your thesis, your points? Anyone care to share? Um, I picked La La Land because yes, that's first one. of all, it has amazing cinematography. I just think the color schemes of that movie are really unique and it conveys like a mood that's happening. And I also just like the way they play things out. It's not like your typical movie, but they convey the storyline and uh, I liked the plot line, it was really unique, it was really unpredictable. And I also liked how it was kind of like a musical, kind of like an old timey musical, but it was portrayed in a modern way. The one of us, perfect. Excellent. Thanks. And wonderful choice. Anyone else? Wait, was it weird? Oh, cool. <laughs> so I didn't do a movie, I did a game. That's fair. So I did Red Dead Redemption 2, it just came out. That's beautiful. And so I chose the theme, freedom, and the atmosphere, just because those are the big points that have really sold the game for a lot of people. You know, being you know cowboys, being outlaws, that kind of stuff. It's a lot of stuff that you don't really get to do anymore. Um, freedom, you know, a lot of you know, honor system, and it's open world, so you can go anywhere. Atmosphere and the graphics are great. It just came out. You know, it's very realistic. And it's very pretty. It's so perfect. I would say it's not every day you get to take someone and tie them to a train track. We don't do that anymore. Um, can I pick on you, Melody and Sean? What were your? I mean, mine was the last that I. That's well. fair. <laughs> so. I can pull that up. I just mine was more about the character arcs, and so I was going to talk about each of them like Ray's and Pose and Finn's and the challenges that they have to overcome and the ways that they develop as characters. Um, and then talk about overall how there's this message of like the happy ending requires sacrifice. What about you, Bill? I did my never ending story and um, I just uh, expanded on the relatable struggle. So uh, the main character, I can't even remember his name, but he's bullied and then he gets revenge on the bullies. Uh, he isolates himself in a closet and he escapes into a, into a story that he was told not to read. So those were the relatable struggles and then imaginative characters. I had the love dragon, but the oracle, they like shoot lasers at him as he's trying to go through. And then the nothing, which I thought, how would you visually put the nothing in there? And it's like the storm. And then unexpected ending. Uh, where he gets to start over, he's exacting revenge on his oppressors. And then it's kind of like the casting call at the end. So all of those who were destroyed, like get re re redeemed, I don't know. And then the, the reader has the power to change their ending. So I don't know if anyone's seen the movie, but it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Anyone else care to share before we move on? No? Okay, that's fine. I will say, who, I'm going to ask, who feels like they could, if you were actually asked by, say, your English class or your film class or whatever, say you were asked to write a three-page essay about what you've done, do you feel like you could reasonably do that based on what you've written down? It'd be pretty easy, right? And unfortunately, not every paper will be as potentially interesting or maybe even awesome as tell us why your favorite movie is awesome. But the principles remain the same. Having an outline is going to help you know what to write. Any given assignment becomes less intimidating when you actually have something set up of what you're going to write down. And that is gospel truth. Uh, we're actually going to pass the time to Melanie, who will tell you what to do with all of those things fail you. <laughs> uh, so I, I chose the birds because I thought when you think of anxiety, it's seeing the birds on the wire that are ready to attack you. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like that. Um, but there's, there's some strategies for lowering anxiety, and um, I work a lot with students who have a lot of high anxiety. So one of the things, they, they've um, done a lot of studies, that if just writing out your worries, um, so maybe before you're ready to write your paper, you just write out all the things you're worried about with that assignment can help get it out of your head and um, declutter <laughs> so that you can focus more on what you're writing. So that's one. Um, thinking about what's the worst that can happen, you know, if my teacher uh, gives me a 0% a on my efforts, you know, 
is that the end of the world? Or um, the best case scenario too, like what if they love my paper and then decide to share it with the whole class or something like that. So think of um, on the spectrum and then try to figure out um, where, you, where you feel like it may not be as bad or as good as you think. So uh, making it more realistic. And then uh, my favorite method, uh, when you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious, especially if it's a prompt that's not very uh, clear, um, is, is just breaking it into those bite-sized pieces, which I think is like making an outline or just thinking of a thesis statement or maybe just opening up a Word doc and titling it. <laughs> just starting somewhere and, and then moving from there to different things. Um, I think venting can help a lot, and I have heard that talking with your mother lowers your stress level. So call your mom if you need <laughs> some help. Uh, and then um, I, I had a long discussion with my husband last night on language shift, and I thought, oh, I, I better add that. So think of your to-do list, and then instead of the, I have to get this done, I, um, I, I'm, you know, the have to, change it to I, I get the opportunity to learn something or think of the positives when it comes to making assignments. And there are some apps, one of the two of my favorite apps for anxiety lowering things, one is called Virtual Hope Box. And so if, if you get to the point where you're ready to cry and you need just a time to, to take that time aside, you know, before you're ready to tackle the big project. Um, they have like an escape, uh, I think it's Mahjong Solitaire, which is my favorite, or um, guided meditations, things like that, to just kind of get you calm. For me, uh, the thing that gets me calm is Pandora, electronica music for studying. That's how I can grade papers. <laughs> and then another one's called Stop, Breathe, and Think. This one's really cool because you can choose different emotions and, and then it will give you guided meditation based on what emotions you choose. And there's everything from super happy to I am ready to punch someone. So, uh, so those are just some apps that might help with anxiety. And then I put together, because I think another one of the anxious things is um, talking with your professor and so I have a little bookmark if you want, and it's just some points talking with your professor. So the first one would be addressing them with respect. Um, just, you know, instead of, hey, you, like, dear professor so-and-so. Um, and then being prepared, like, instead of just saying, I don't understand what you're wanting with this paper. Maybe I, you know, here's what I've done to prepare for the paper, but here's where I'm stuck. And, and being specific on what things you're confused about will help your professor be able to answer your question better. And then um, I, the last one is a compliment sandwich. So I always love it when students say, I really appreciate the effort you've taken to um, you know, teach me these things and letting me know, you know what it is. Here's my, here's my confusion, but thank you so much for considering this. And so that's my compliment sandwich. And I think those kind of principles will help your instructors be able to communicate better with you. Uh, but then you can come prepared with a plan. So, so yeah, happy Halloween. <laughs> thank you, Melanie. Um, we forgot to mention one thing at the beginning because this presentation is being recorded. If you're uncomfortable with that, let us know and we'll make sure you are not in any of the film. The film is for our own use, um, so just let us know. Please let Weston know, he's the one with the perfect eyebrows back there. Perfect eyebrows. <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for making the sacrifice during your lunch time to come and hear our presentation. We hope that something that we said helps. We also hope that if for any reason you ever have any questions or concerns, come to the Writing Center. We have three of them. Um, come and talk with one of our amazing tutors and you'll learn so much and they can hopefully help push you past that point of frustration. But. And if you take nothing else away from this whole workshop, discussion, shenanigans, please just keep these points in mind because that really will improve your writing experience. You might actually write, like, maybe like writing a little bit and your grades will go up and life will be better.
But yeah, also go to the Writing Center, do tuition thing for it anyway. <laughs> okay. have, a, have a Halloween, guys. Happy Halloween. Thank you for coming. Halloween.